after 12 years of not being able to visit my country, it happened and I can't get over it. I still haven't like actually took in that it happened. <laughs> we'll be crossing the borders and going in to Syria. Recently, our team returned from a trip to the Turkish-Syria border, and our journey began in Gaziantep, Turkey. It's about an hour's drive from the border of Syria. Our first meeting was with Bahar, a humanitarian organization that operates in liberated areas of Syria, including both the Northeast and the Northwest. We met with our friends, the White Helmets, the Syria Civil Defense, who are the heroes and the first responders on the ground in Syria. Then we met with the provisional government for a while and discussed their challenges and abilities and our opportunities maybe to help support some of their efforts. And then we finished up the meeting with a meeting at the clinic that SCTF has taken over a few years ago, referred to as a house of healing. We first started supporting the house of healing in 2016. This center provides emergency housing for Syrians who are internally displaced but allowed temporarily into Turkey for medical treatment because of their severe illness or injury. These are cancer patients, amputees, burn victims, children with terrible scoliosis or blindness. The House of Healing provides a safe place for them while they receive medical treatment and recover. Going back to Syria was scary. Syria is not safe, of course. Even though I was in areas outside of the regime control, I could still fear a bomb dropped on me and dying. Being back to Syria was important to my work because I've been trying for years to tell the stories of the Syrian people. And at some point, I had to get closer to them by visiting them in their homes, even the destroyed homes. The first time we crossed over was into the cities of Al Rai and Azaz. They had both been destroyed by 11 years of war, uh, but they were being rebuilt. We toured a newly built factory, medical facilities, and a new school. We saw destruction everywhere and endless tents full of families who didn't have a home anymore. But we also saw the hope and what a free Syria could be and what it could look like. The high point for me was physically visiting the Wisdom House. Uh, I was an early investor in the Wisdom House going back six years ago. The leadership of SETF and others in Syria helped produce the first Wisdom House. Visiting the Wisdom House for the first time after so many years of supporting them from afar, to see the teachers and hug them and see the kids and their smiling faces and our letters of hope decorating the walls, to feel the walls myself was the most incredible thing. And those children have lost everything. And, and experiencing that after working with them online for so long and, and getting to know them online and versus seeing them in person was one of the most beautiful things. I can't even put into words how beautiful it was. It was so many emotions, such happiness, and, and, and you see their faces and you can tell everything that they've been through, but they pushed through, pushed through these hardships and, and they really, are the strongest kids that I think live on this earth right now. And of course, none of our work at the Syrian Emergency Task Force would be possible if we didn't have people like you supporting our work by donating or doing whatever they can to help our projects on the ground. So please, if you have a gift to give, whether you're writing a letter of hope or you're able to donate, please do. We need your help and the Syrian people need it more than ever.